Hi everyone and welcome to our wonderful DP What's Cooking webinar again. So just to start off with, I'm going to call on Narosha to join us. Hi Narosha. Morning everyone. How are you today? Cold? Cold, freezing cold but good. Okay, great. <laughs> so today we thought we're just going to chat about NCL and family sort of friendly travel, which I think is quite a nice thing to highlight. So, Narosha, just on the first point, your youth programs, I think that's quite important Absolutely. to touch base on. Could you tell us about this? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, NCL has, um, you know, various different youth programs. Um, sorry, it says my internet stable is unstable, but I hope you can hear me. Yeah. So, we have various different types of youth programs, um, you know, different groups, age groups. Um, we have our Splash Academy, that's for um, ages 3 to 12, we have, and have Entourage, which is for our teens, basically ages 13 to 17. And then we also have our Guppies program, and that's for the, the infants, six months to three years. And then, you know, within each of these youth programs, you know, there's lots of um, engagement activities, um, sensory-based activities, you know, just interactive social um, programs where all these different age groups can mingle and get to know each other. Fantastic. So they really do cover everything. And from yeah. an accommodation point of view, what have they put in place to um, you know, help families from an accommodation? So NCL has various different types of family accommodations. I mean, we have our standard staterooms that take from um, four, two guests all the way up to six guests in certain staterooms. But then we also have our multi-room uh, suite, you know, the, the Haven suite. Some of them take two to eight guests. Um, two and three bedroom haven suites and then we also have our interleading staterooms and this is perfect for families you know if they want their privacy but then also having the option of having the interleading room so that they can have access to their their kids oh fantastic and then just lastly family dining because i know that can be quite challenging for families you know can they sit together how does the dining yeah, so with freestyle dining, you can literally eat when you want and where you want. Um, plus, kids age three and under always eat for free in any of our speciality dinings. And then also there's an option where, um, you know, if, if the parents want to dine with their kids and then take the kids to the, um, you know, Splash Academy, they can do that as well and then still enjoy their dining on their own. So there is that option as well. Okay, excellent. Thanks so much. I think that's a lovely um, overview of the, the free, you know, the family friendly types of things that, that NCL offers. So thanks for your time again today. Have a lovely day and stay warm. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thanks, so now we're going to hand over to Diana. Very exciting today. We've also got a very special guest from Cape Town who I think sent all the weather up to Gauteng to us. But anyway, we'll forgive her. But Dee's going to start off and we're going to be talking about Costa. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Over to you, Dee. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. So yeah, I had the very nice privilege of joining Costa on a sailing starting from Barcelona. I just fell absolutely in love with Barcelona. So I'm just going to give you some updates on Costa and on the product itself. So it is an Italian cruise company. So guys, please be aware that is a, it, the feeling on board is European. So just make sure that your clients are aware of it. They do speak five languages on board. So you've got your Italian, French, German, Spanish, and English. But while I was on board, there wasn't one staff member or bar member or anyone that could not understand me. So, you know, everybody do understand you on board. But yes, the main um, language on board is Italian. And then so that you know, it is a cruise liner for everybody. It's a three-star deluxe cruise um, company that we represent. So with Costa being a three-star deluxe company, this is for everybody. First time cruise clients, honeymooners, honeymooners even do get a little special if we do get, get the correct signing for them. And then it's for families. The biggest thing about Costa is that children under the age of 18, sharing with two paying adults, they cruise absolutely for free. They only pay poor charges and taxes. So with that, it is a big saving when it comes to families. So with Costa as well, they have changed ways of how we can book passengers. So you've got a basic option, which means if your clients come to you and say, listen here, I want to cruise on Costa, I want to go to the Med, I want to do this itinerary, but I want your cheapest price possible, we do offer you the basic option. That means we will look at your inside, outside, 
or balcony cabin, but you, your clients cannot choose a dining time. They cannot have drinks included. They cannot choose their cabin. Whatever the system gives you, that is what we're going to book for the clients. Then I have another option called all-inclusive. So that means your clients can choose a dining time. They can choose their cabin and there are drinks included. And very nice with Costa as well is it's not just because a lot of cruise companies say, okay, your drinks are included or the freebies are included, but guests in one and two only. On Costa, it's for everybody in the cabin. And Costa is one of the few cruise companies where you can actually fit five people into one cabin. So it's very cost effective when it comes to families. Um, then yeah, they do have the kids clubs as well. The kids clubs are called your pocket clubs. So yeah, you can book the kiddies packages, you can book Wi-Fi internet packages, you can pre-book excursions, you can pre-book um, your anything, trances, anything through us. We just don't offer accommodation, but we do on our land side. So yeah, I've done a quick example just to give you guys an idea. I've taken next year, June, because I've done it on the Smeralda, which is the newest baby in the Costa fleet. And I've done a Savona return for four passengers, so two adults, two children, because remember the children only go for free if they share with two paying adults in one cabin. So I've done a balcony cabin for seven nights, Savona return, so it's going to be accommodation, your transfers, all your meals in a balcony cabin with gratuities. I've included that because you can prepay that on Costa and all your meals and all your drinks. It works out just over 70,000 Rand for four people a Med Cruise peak season in the Med on the newest ship of the Costa fleet. So yeah, if you divide that by four passengers, it's just over 18,000 Rand per person for a week holiday within the Med. So I hope that gives you a bit of idea of what, what Costa is about. Um, yeah, and if there's anything, you know where to find us. Thanks for your time. Hey guys, um, so I was fortunate enough to actually spend some time on board the, the Costa Smeralda early in the year. So I'm just going to tell you a bit more about the ship uh, and what we experienced. Um, so let's just get on. So the, the Costa Smeralda is a bit of a game changer for, for Costa Cruises. Uh, it's uh, Costa's first LNG powered ship, which means it's, it's powered by liquefied natural gas. It's a bit greener. Um, and it's a bit, bit friendlier on the environment. It's the first of two of the, these big ships. Um, the next one will be called Costa Toscana and it's going to be coming in June 2021. It's, uh, 17, 17, it's got 17 decks, um, houses 5,225 passengers um, and it's about 340 meters long. So compared to some of the other Costa ships, it's quite big. Um, like uh, Diana says, this, this ship cruises around the um, western Mediterranean. The, the example she used it starts, as, uh, starts from Savona, then to Marseille, then to Barcelona, uh, Palma, Rome, and then La Spezia, and then back to Savona. So that seven night itinerary is the repeat itinerary that this uh, ship cruises, and it cruises pretty much year round. Um, so, yeah, just uh, some photos of the ship. Uh, the cabin, we were fortunate enough to stay in a balcony cabin, so you can see the uh, cabins are, are very spacious and big ship, uh, normal big ship uh, type of thing. It's got all the different amenities, water slides, running tracks, spas and everything. Uh, so yeah, perfect, perfect uh, type of cruise. Uh, and next is actually the food. Thanks, Jane. <laughs> So food on board, uh, lots of restaurants. Uh, there's 11 restaurants on board uh, together with 19 bars. Um, the nicest restaurant, you can see that middle picture, uh, they've got a teppanyaki restaurant there. And then they've got a food lab where you join one of the executive chefs where they take you through, um, through uh, the course and the food that you're gonna cook and then you actually enjoy it with a nice glass of wine afterwards. So you, there's a bit of a learning thing in between. Uh, the uh, fine dining restaurant, 
uh, some of these, the, the foods or for some of the dishes there on the bottom and left, uh, also brilliant, brilliant um, uh, standard quality and, and was really delicious. They've got a really nice concept also on board, which is called a, a cicchetti. That is uh, Italy's answer to tapas. So that little photo on the top left, those are the little things that you, you order and then you also, you enjoy those little bite-sized meals over a glass of wine before your dinner and, and so on. Uh, a very nice thing that I, I like, I'm a bit of a brand fundi uh, and I'm really interested in marketing and branding. So Costa has joined up with all these different Italian brands. Uh, like you can see there, Nutella, Campari, uh, Aperol Spritz, they, um, they've joined and brought all these brands on, on board. So one of the outlets on board is called the Nutella Bar, where you can have anything that you can imagine with Nutella on, from Nutella pizzas, obviously ice creams, pancakes, um, sandwiches, pretty much anything, but it's got to have Nutella on, you can, you can have that at that bar, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, yeah, and then um, what was the uh, other thing? Oh, the other brands that they've joined up is uh, Barilla Pasta. So all the pasta on board is made from Barilla. It's a, it's a very famous Italian brand. Um, other things obviously is uh, Illy Coffee and Ferrari Spumante, which is a very, very fancy uh, Italian uh, champagne. So they've all got all these branded uh, drinks and food on board and so on. Um, my next part is a bit of the entertainment. Uh, so the middle of the ship, uh, which is my middle picture here, is called the Coliseo. It's a three-story entertainment venue, like circular. You can see all those different screens. Now that roof is one big LCD screen and you've got these pillars on the side, which is also LED screen. So that changes on the themes to what they're doing. They had trampoline shows, they had all the different shows, comedy shows, musicals, every night there was something to do as you get on all the different ships. And then there's a nightclub, the bottom left picture. That nightclub and stage, uh, or it's a stage for, for performances and shows, and then later in the evening it turns to a nightclub as well. And then on board our ship, we also had a, a silent disco the last night, just before we got off, um, or where, where we disembarked in, in Rome. That top second picture from the left with all the different colors, that's where they have uh, the, the silent disco. It is quite weird because if you take off your, your earphones, you just see all these hundreds of people with their earphones dancing and jumping and then whatever, and you can't hear a thing, uh, which I found quite weird, but it was quite fun to see, uh, to see this. And then also, like I mentioned, there's all sorts of uh, water slides and outdoor theaters on board. There's a great spa, uh, kiddies club, uh, and then also something new for Costa here is they've got a, a specialty dining uh, restaurant where families can opt to go and have dinner with their kids, and it's adjacent to the kids club, uh, so they don't they don't go to the bigger fancy restaurant uh, with their with their kids. And ah, that's pretty much me. Just before I go, that's just to show you the the slides in the evening. And then my nugget of knowledge uh, for Costa, uh, I know all the different cruising brands have got apps that you need to download. Uh, we downloaded the app. It helps you with everything that happens on board. Uh, it shows you what's happening where, and there's a bit of a nice map that tells you where you are on board the ship as well. And a nice thing is you can actually chat with other cruisers on board if you accept it's like the mini a social media uh, channel or, or account that you have. But my big thing is when your clients cruise with Costa, get them um, to join Costa, uh, the Costa Club because they actually get some really nice discounts from the start, uh, from the lowest tier of the Costa Club. So you get some really nice discounts. I think it's about 15% on all onboard foods that you purchase then there. Uh, from your speciality restaurant, so the tapenyaki, the chiketi, all of those different things. Uh, that's a really nice, cool thing that you can tell your clients once they cruise uh, with Costa. So yeah, that's me uh, for affordable cruising with Costa. And then next up, we've got Jen. 
And um, as Shelly said, we've got a guest, Liesl uh, from Le is actually joining us as well this week. So thanks, guys. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Roland. Yeah, so I was very, very fortunate and very, very privileged to have been able to go on a little educational with Le Boat. And it was such an incredible holiday. So before I start, I'm going to ask our special guest, Liesl, to please give us a little breakdown on the self-barging holiday and on Le Boat itself. Thanks, Jen, and thank you so much, DP, for inviting me today. Um, just to give you a little bit of background on La Boat, we've been around for just over 50 years, and we are the largest suppliers of self-drive boating holidays um, globally. And for those of you who don't uh, necessarily know what a self-drive boating holiday is, many South Africans refer to these type of holidays as barging holidays. So with no license required, no experience, you can cruise down the canals and rivers in Europe as well as Canada. Um, we operate in uh, 17 very unique cruising areas in nine different countries. So uh, within Europe and then of course Canada, it probably is one of the most um, uh, or uh, affordable, one of the most exciting adventurous holidays for South Africans to go on these days. Thank so that's you. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so this was our big boy boat. It's, he's called the Vision 4, and it was one of the bigger boats that we actually saw while we were barging, so we felt really fancy. It was a really comfortable boat, had e absolutely everything we needed, and on that deck, on top of the boat, we spent many happy afternoons playing cards, drinking gins and wines, and everything you do while you're in France. And I kid you not, there was even a braai on there, so in true Af South African style, of course we had to have a barbecue. Next slide, Roland. So a question that we get asked a lot is, is it difficult to, to skip this boat? And um, the answer is no, not no, not at all. So between you and me, I'm probably not the very best driver normally on the roads, but I managed to do some boating and it, I found it okay. So that lever basically is very simple. If you push it forward, you go forward pull it back, you go slower, you can steer as normal, and that little joystick helps you to navigate through some of the tighter spots. Next, Roland. So inside the boat itself is really, really comfortable. So it's called, the boat is called the Vision 4. We had four separate cabins on our side, and um, each cabin had a separate ensuite bathroom, which is an absolute win. And in the front of the boat, you had like a communal, communal kitchen um, saloon area. So this boat could take eight, we, there were eight of us, so it could take eight and someone could have slept in the saloon area as well. There's also another little control center where you could take helm of the boat and you can drive from the inside. Um, the saloon area was so lovely and this holiday is so great for families because everyone gets to get involved. One person gets to drive, you get to go to the grocery store together. It's self-catering, so you get to the grocery store together, get your cheeses, your hams, your breads, and your wines, and oh my gosh, everything that's amazing, you know, about food, and you go and um, cook it yourself. The kitchen, I was absolutely impressed with. They had utensils there that I probably don't even have in my own kitchen. It is really well equipped. Um, and if you wanted to bake a birthday cake, you really, really, really could have. Um, so, Liesl, we mentioned the boat is such great value for money for a South African holiday maker. What, 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 why is that? And um, what, is, what would we look at in terms of approximate starting prices? Um, yes, Jen, the beauty about the boat is that um, you pay for the boat for a week. Our standard itinerary is seven nights. And although we've got different sizes of boats, if you're looking for a family of four, even up to six people, you can do the holiday for a week between 40 and 60,000 Rand for a week. And that's your that's for a week for, for four to six people. So it's really good value for money. And remember it's your accommodation as well as your transport. So you stay on the boat, um, you've got everything on the boat, uh, it's fully equipped and you move from one little village to the next, stop wherever you want to stop, um, for how long you want to stop. So um, it's like a little self-catering unit on the water and that's what, what makes it such good value for money. 
you can go and buy from the local supermarkets and especially in France from the fresh markets. You don't have to go and eat in expensive restaurants, but you also have the opportunity if you then want to do that. And that's what South Africans love is the freedom of choice of, you know, when to stop wherever they want to and to buy from local supermarkets and grocery stores, which makes it very affordable. Absolutely. And um, in terms of starting price, um, so I would say, um, you know, in, in, in a season like May for about four people, you're probably looking at about 35,000 Rand for four people. That's, um, it works out. I always say to people, you can work at a, on around 1,200, 2,300 Rand per person per day. Wow, that's incredible. So the destination that we did was Canal du Nivene, Um, and you mentioned there were a whole bunch of other uh, destinations that Le Boat does offer around France and even Canada. That's right. So France, of course, is our most popular destination. That's also where we have the majority of our cruising areas. So um, Canal de Nivernais is in, in the north of um, France, very close to Paris. But then we've got a beautiful cruisy area in the south of France on the Canal de Midi. We've got uh, cruising areas um, in, in different areas in France, depending what your customers want to experience. But then we've also got Holland, very popular in May for tulip season. We've got Germany, um, we've got um, Italy, we've got Belgium, Scotland, Ireland on the Shannon River, and recently opened up a beautiful cruising area on the Rideau Canal in Canada. Wow, that's beautiful. Cool. So um, just to give you an idea of where we were, we did the route from Tenay to Migène. And to put that in perspective, Migène is around about two hour drive south of Paris and Tenay just underneath it. We did this journey in about in six days. And um, how easy was it to plan the route? It was really cool. So as soon as you get on board, someone tells you exactly what buttons to push and how to how to do this whole self-driving thing. It was quite simple. And we get a little map and a file of exactly what you can do in each place. And we also have this little table that helps you plan your, your journey. So on the first day, we sat together as a group and we said, okay, cool, what are we going to do? Um, the first one um, was from... Clamacy to Tanay. So we could decide, um, we knew that it would take nine hours to get from the first destination to the second, and we would go through nine locks. So we just planned because during lunchtime, the lock keepers go for lunch and um, they're not operating the locks. So we plan, okay, cool. Today we're going to do a five hour boating. As I said, it's really, really relaxed. It's, there's no rush at all. We could leave at any time of the day. Um, and we were going to do five hours. So by lunchtime, we'd make sure to go through five locks. And then after lunch, we'd do four locks. And then that, therefore, we arrived at the next place in time to explore and have a lovely dinner and go to the supermarket. And what really helps is in summer in Europe, the sun sets quite, quite late at night. The first time I saw, it was the first time I saw that. And I was like really, <laughs> really entertained. So um, a big part of cruising, um, self-barging is the locks. Lisa, will you explain a little bit about the locks for us? Yes, that's probably one of the um, most popular questions we get from customers. What, what is a lock and how to operate a lock? Now, just to make it very easy, a lock is like a step in the waterway. So when you're traveling upstream or downstream, you need to get the boat upstream and you need to get the boat downstream. So it's like a step in the waterway. Um, it's, you've got two little gates almost that fills up with water if you go up. And there's always a lock keeper that assists you to go through the lock. So you generally don't have to worry too much about it. They will help you and support you to go through the lock. But yes, you know, short, it is a step in the waterway. Yeah, it was really cool because um, you could also um, take part. You had to get off the two people had to get off the boat, tie the ropes around the bullard so the um, boat doesn't move too much. And you wait for the lock keeper and you see the water rushing in. Then all of a sudden you're like higher or lower than what you started. I was very amused, but I think I'm also very easily <laughs> amused. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> So this is just a little eye candy for you, um, what you see along the way. I mean, um, this is what you see for six days. It's a completely different type of holiday. I mean, I think we're used to sort of doing things and constantly exploring with the boat. There's this beautiful balance between exploring and seeing things, walking, bicycling. You could stop wherever you like, but also a lot of time off where you're cruising slowly across the water and staring up at the beautiful sky or just 
looking out at the wonderful scenery that's around you. Next. Um, so this is one of my favorite things about the, the routing that we did is um, the further you go south of Paris, the more sort of smaller the towns are, the more old they are. So for me, going up from Tenay all the way up to Magen, and then I spent two days in Paris. It was kind of like a journey through time, going from the old, and as you went up, the, the places became more built up, and they, they were bigger, and it really was going from the old to the new, and I really liked that. That's a little Tenay. Um, and then we stopped at Chetals and saw with this beautiful cathedral. It was so ornately decorated. Never seen anything like that before. And then we went to Clemency, which is a little bit more residential. And um, we had a nice long hike up to the chapel where we took this picture. There were families um, playing around on the grass. And then we stopped in Vermonton. <laughs> so one thing that I would absolutely recommend when doing a La Boat is definitely, definitely hire the bicycles. Um, it is self-catering, so it really is cool to, you know, hop on your bicycle, go to the grocery store and hop back with the baguette in your backpack. There's nothing more iconic. And um, also, you know, to just dock somewhere, get off and just go on a mission with your bicycle. And you see such awesome things that um, it's definitely, definitely recommended. And then we stopped at Auxerre. Auxerre to me was just so fairy tale, and it, it was a cobblestone street, and it was artistic, and um, you know here it was a little bit bigger, so we saw ATMs and more cars where we didn't previously. And then we, the trip ended in Magen, and then I extended for two days in Paris, which was basically me being lost, but <laughs> absolutely. It was just such a cool, I know Paris is, you know, some people's favorite city and I can absolutely see why it was absolutely beautiful. That was the sunset over the Seine River and um, yeah, it was an amazing holiday. And what I think is given this COVID situation, I think Le Boat is an ideal holiday post COVID. Do you agree with me, Liesl? Yes, absolutely. The fact that you are away from big crowds, um, you can be with your family or your friends um, the whole time. We've also redesigned our whole customer journey on arrival, the check-in, etc., to be, you know, taking social distancing and um, uh, everything that needs to be in place. But yes, you know, you can actually decide how much you want, how much interaction you want with other people because, um, you know, you're on the boat uh, away from larger cities, away from crowds, which is absolutely ideal. Absolutely. Um, and then for the nugget of knowledge, I would say chat to your client about when they go on the boat. It is generally, um, you do it in the summer, but if you do it early on in the season, it's a little bit quieter. So for example, the trip that we did was in the beginning of May. So a lot of the smaller towns in Europe almost closed, shut down for the winter. Um, and what was really cool for me is there were never any queues around the locks. I mean, a lot of things may, were still closed. So it was a bit of a quieter um, more relaxed journey, but what would it have been like if I had gone, for example, in the middle of summer in July? Jen, most certainly um, busier because that's also the start of the European holidays, but it also gives a little bit of a different atmosphere. Some people like to have um, more people around, um, you know, it obviously is a little bit warmer, but um, you will never have a situation where there are too many boats trying to go through a lock or just too crowded purely because the French waterways or the waterways only allow a certain amount of boats um, on the canals and the rivers. So yes, it will be busier. It will, you ha will have more of a summer atmosphere. So it totally depends on what the customer's like. You know, um, May, for example, in Holland is very popular because of the tulips. And, you know, some people want to go to Italy when there's lots of people. So it totally depends on the customer. Um, you know, a lot of South Africans can only travel to Europe in peak season. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Liesl, and telling us a little bit more about Le Boat. And thank you for all of you for listening to our story. Over to Shelley. Thank you so much, Jen, and thank you, Liesl. I'm all French inspired. So we oui, we oui, bonjour, le je, le thème. Oh my goodness, my French is not very really good. But today what I'm going to be making is some French onion soup. So we're going to take our little onion. Of course, you will need a lecousse pot. You can see I'm very French. And we're going to cut our onion. 
just like that. And you're going to start, you know, chopping your onion into little pieces. And as I start crying, it's very traumatic. It's actually the onion, guys, it's not me. We're going to take a leek. You need a celery stick. You need a leek. You chop it all in little pieces. And last but not least, you need some beautiful, beautiful organic um, chicken broth to put in there. And then, of course, we need to add some wine. And you know how familiar I am with my French wine. So I just throw some in the pot. But, of course, I throw some in the glass as well. Mm. Je t'aime, bonjour. Beautiful Paul de Vue de Francais. And we just keep chopping. We throw it all in the pot. And, of course, then we just saute it. But last of all, you need a baguette. So, of course, I've got my beautiful French baguette which I baked this morning. As you can see, it's all fresh. But for those of you who find this a bit tedious, you can always go and get your little packet of soup, which is your French onion soup. And of course, just pop it in a pot and warm it up. So guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We, of course, will certainly be giving you this wonderful recipe that I've given you. And we look forward to seeing you all next week. Goodbye.